here I find that I'm very conscious of being a woman. And it's not anything like, it's nothing really blatant, but it's, it's very, you know, you're the pioneers, you're the ones who have to do things here. And, I, and I, it's, what, it's why I came here. I wanted to be, you know, a pioneer in a place like this. I felt that would be really healthy. But there are a lot of tensions underneath, kind of running under everything. And some women don't notice them at all. Some women are very happy here. But a lot of women, especially upper class women who've been here for longer, and the whole freshman aura is kind of worn off, and they're down to the reality of what Amherst really is, they find it a little bit harder. And I think the thing that bothers me the most is just the complete unawareness of people of any sort of ideas of sexism. You know, they, it's like some of it is between students will be, you know, pretty blatant. It'll always be kind of on a joking level, but you know, you know, she's a girl and stuff like that. And, and I find that very offensive and a lot of people will just, just laugh it off and go on. Sorry, the guy line. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, what do you guys let into this fraternity, too? We take, we take anybody that wants us. <laughs> it's gotten fewer people. Very few, very few. We're going downhill, but we, we see a sudden uptrend. Time <laughs> future. There's been a lot of bad things admitted this year. No, no talk take, about our. We take any good solid American as long as he's not Polish, Italian, <laughs> Black, Puerto Rican. You know, as long as he doesn't have any ethnic. Semi-white. You know, anybody. No. Talking about our reputation, it's pretty solid. Pretty solid. Though. Rude, crude, and socially unacceptable. There, there was a rumor going around that we had like the second best team on campus, but uh, first. it's first now. It's first. I'm sorry. <laughs> after last semester. First. Yes, after last semester, I did get that A minus and. Uh, <laughs> for the chance of being around with all their friends and having a good time and not having to worry about being acceptable to females and worrying about female points of view, etc. And I know a lot, of, a lot of my friends joined DU for the exact point of coming to DU and having a good time without having to worry about impressing girls, etc., etc. <laughs> doors open, well in this place anyway, everyone has the doors open just walking and start talking to somebody else. It's not at all sterile. It's really like a family type atmosphere. You do form a little culture as it is. You get your own lingo, your own sure. your own slang. And you, and you, and your you own just, attitude. You're just like, you know, ragging everybody. You know, everyone gets this nickname, everyone gets ragged on, everyone feels like part of something. That's know? the rag. That's the rag. You don't get you don't attitude. get lost in the shuffle. Even Kale doesn't get lost. This kid. You just call him Kale. He doesn't get lost, you know? You where where lost. is he? Uh, okay, I really don't know, but uh, in the library, where else? No, but like that, everyone has an everyone has an identity within the fraternity, you know. And when you're just living in a dorm, sometimes you can lose that. You know, they just like, you, know, you go to class every day, you come back, and you go to the work. And you... I mean by people missing the experience is more people avoiding the kind of conflict and the confrontations that this time in your life and being with meeting new people having exciting courses reading all kinds of things invite that um, 
people tend to, or I tend to, run away from those confrontations. Why didn't you get into Saw You? Well, my friend, all right, my friend was, for a long time, pretty sure he was going to go to Fidel, all right? Because he knew a lot of the people there and liked them. He got known to the place. But then he found out exactly, you know, what group of people were going to end up from this year's class. From that, he decided not to go there. And by that time, it was a little late to get into the full swing at SIU. I didn't think Rush was all that bad. But as somebody pointed out to me, I got two bits. So for me, it wasn't bad. But there were people that didn't get any bits. And then... There were people that didn't get the bits in the frats where they wanted them. You really have to define your friendships, which is something I've never done before. You, you have to, you're planning your future for, well, for next year. And it doesn't seem like it should be that big a deal that, that a lot of people got upset. Just because you, know, you really want, you have to decide who you want to live with and then you have to see whether it works out, whether the people that you want to live with get in the same place you do. And a lot of people didn't get in where, where their friends got in. And I couldn't choose between the friends. And so I just said, forget the friends, forget the people, just look at the house. And, and I, wasn't, I wasn't going to stay up all Saturday or Friday night and, and decide. It, it was a cop out, I know, and it was pretty selfish, but I just, I didn't, I saw too many people getting really upset about it, and I just really didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. And, and so I just, I just chose where I wanted to live. Part of the problem with Amherst College is that, that it's geared toward involvement rather than commitment. And I don't, I'm not necessarily sure that that's due to the, to the liberal arts curriculum, but just to, I think it may be partly due to that, because things are, like looking at, looking at the college, looking at ourselves, and talking about a lot of things kind of diffuses the energy or the emotions that are behind the kind of thing that you need to make a commitment. They're, there's pig and chicken on the island. They have to decide what they're going to eat. Right? There's nothing to eat. So the, uh, the chicken says, well, uh, let's have ham and eggs. Right? The pig thinks about it for a while and says, uh, listen, he says, for you, that's involvement. For me, that's commitment. And I think that sums up very neatly the, the difference between those two terms. And I think that any issue can be discussed, but not all issues can be acted on. Next person who will speak will be Carl Seidman. Carl is a member of the South African Support Committee and has been in the forefront of our struggle here. Between October and the trustee meeting is taking place this weekend. We appeal to the trustees to reconsider our demands and to hold an open meeting in front of the full college community where their policy could be discussed fully. They, re they um, refused to do that at this meeting and instead organized an informal luncheon. I see it more as an issue that can get students at Amherst and, and students and other people around the country actively involved in questioning um, the role that U.S. corporations play and the role that the American government is playing. And, um, you know, I do see it part of an anti-imperialist type of struggle, but also part of a sort of consciousness-raising um, activity, you know, that I think, like, a lot of people in the U.S., you know, should be involved in. There were a lot of Amherst students there. I mean, not, probably not as many as we would have liked to have seen, and probably not as many as there were not Amherst students there. But I don't know, I think demonstrations tend to be foreign to Amherst students. Um, they don't necessarily see the, the importance of it or the influence or impact it's going to have. And it was a very cold day. And, you know, the fact that standing outside for two hours in the cold would really be worthwhile, would really achieve something, is pretty foreign to students here. You know, political activity to the extent that people partake in it. And Amherst is writing a letter to your congressman or something like that. People don't really take an active role in politics. Part of it is I think a lot of people feel, haven't really thought the things out and don't really see a role for themselves in it or try and understand what their role should be in it. You know, they, they sort of become resigned. You know, they're sort of concerned, but they're, they're willing to 
to let other people do the fighting for them if, if they really haven't thought it out. I think one of the biggest problems is that of, of the sort of pre-professionalism is that you, you see Amherst as only a means to an end, and, and a real, you're going to be at Amherst for four years, and then you're going to leave. So it's important to you is its ability to secure you a place in grad school or secure you a job afterwards. So you're not really that concerned about changing the college or fighting for something while you're at the college. And, and that's really a problem. Um, the other thing um, may be if, if you're super anxious about your ability to succeed, you don't even want to spend the time that it takes um, to involve yourself in political stuff. I don't know whether it's the curriculum or whether it's uh, just the environment, but for some reason there isn't a lot of, of bearing of oneself around here. Things are discussed, and, and things are discussed in a, in a very good way. I mean, you, there are a lot of interesting things that are said, and, and, and a lot of, of moving things are said, but they don't allow, or they, it's not an environment that's extremely conducive to people uh, making the kind of self-identification with what they're talking about. And with that self-identification, the possibility for real commitment. They had a commitment level to a play far, which far exceeded what I had expected. You know, uh, during the course of a lot of performances and a lot of rehearsals, you come in, you do your work, and you leave. Here, because they evolved uh, as actors and as performers, one, and also as an understanding of the play grew and realized that it was, was very, very autobiographical, there became an, uh, a stronger affinity uh, and a stronger relationship that we had as cast members. Let's hear that sympathy in there. Okay? okay. You got yeah. to hear that. Right. I ran into Ed over at a, uh, at a Smith today. Yeah, yeah. Did he, did he give you that note? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He told me about, uh, no, I haven't been around that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's See, it. the song has to jump. That's it. Yeah, the song has got to jump off your lips. It's got to move, you know. Uh, you've got to get out there and y'all got to cook. You know, yeah, you can't you remember, you, you can't bring anything down. Remember, the first scene moves very, very slowly. If y'all come out and your song is like, then that's not going to work. You've got to get off, y'all got to cook. The idea initially came, uh, it was something totally different. It was originally a play about a father and a son, and the, the father was uh, part of the working class, and the son was trying to find himself uh, outside of the relationship of his father. I was called home in May. After I was in an acting class, and I was called home in May uh, on an emergency that said that my father was dying of cancer. Uh, as I got home, being a writer, being just a feeling uh, kind of person, uh, the nature of what I was writing changed, and now all my my writing was really being uh, re reflective in terms of my life, in terms in relationship to his, in terms of a whole life death uh, dichotomy, in terms of what does it really mean to be here, and what is the ultimate purpose of your life, uh, and how is that reflected uh, in terms of like other people, other people be, being sons, people who you touch during the course of your lifetime, uh, and that's how the nature of it changed. It became more something that that emanated organically from my experience and was translated on on paper and then subsequently on stage. Watch out. Here I come. Just let me walk behind you, Walker. Whatever the tension you want, say it. Come on, One step at a time. Here she goes. Come on, baby. One step at a time. Come on, baby. Fall back. Come on. Do it good. Oh, easy now. Watch me now, Sinky. I'm cooking with gas now, baby. <laughs> Come on, Bob. Come on, baby. Take your time, baby. Take your time. You don't have to rush. Sinky, these little steps couldn't hardly be called rushing. Oh, <laughs> baby, Bob. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, yes. oh Bob, you walked the hell out of the steps, man. Bob could always have been a strong <laughs> When he finally died, which is when the play finally came together, which is a strange way of looking at it, but I mean, it, the final chapter almost had been written as when he died. Uh, and his last line, a lot of the dialogue came directly from our experience, from the kinds of things we said. Uh, his last line before he went into, um, a, into a coma 
went to a coma on a Friday and died on, uh, on the following Tuesday. His last line was, I'm so tired. I'm just so tired. Which is how we really ended this play. wrote scholarship for two years to go study in Oxford and um, it's it'll really be a, I look at it as a, as a break as a chance to to really kind of study what I want to study and, and learn more about the world and uh, you know the kind of things that you talk about when you talk about liberal arts it's, it's an extension of liberal arts for two more years with the added attraction of being able to travel around Europe and, and do things like that but as far as as, as saying well I'm going to go to law school after that or or whatever, I, I don't know. A lot of the values that this place uh, purports are not conducive to my development. But in a larger sense, I, I don't know that there's an escape. Uh, I don't know that the entire society is, you know, is this way. Now it's all over, and I sort of see these fleeting faces and uh, people that I never, you know, talked to long enough or things I never thought hard enough about. But my feelings at my graduation are very personal. Um, it's painful for me because of some of the things I've said that I feel like I missed people, that we just somehow missed and um, uh, so it's kind of sad. <laughs>